we, by the time we leave, it'd be important to connect on LinkedIn. There's no reason not to, your colleagues. If you don't have your LinkedIn profile yet, that's okay. You just, you don't have that yet. But if you just put your name and then your full name, first name, um, last name and email, at the end when, we're, well, when we have a break, you can take a picture of that sheet and take it with you. And then I'm gonna teach you also within the body of this, how to connect on LinkedIn by sending someone a message ahead of time, not just connecting. Because I get so many connections, and you will too, and Kathleen does too, you might already, and you may have some creepy connections you're getting. And I am not connecting with someone I don't know. I don't use LinkedIn to fill it with a bunch of people I don't know. I use it to have real connections on it. There's different schools of thoughts. You're looking for a job, so you'll wanna fill it. You'll see, we'll, click, we'll go into that. So my quick journey is I went to Tufts, didn't know what I wanted to do, so I became a political science major because my dad said be a political science major, and I listened to my dad, you know, and my mom. But I like that's what I did. Graduated and went into the hotel business. Strongly recommend it. You'll have my email. You can let me know if you're interested in the hotel business, and I would tell you how I did that. Went into the cruise line business, and then ended up accidentally in the hospitality business, and never looked back. If I had become an ambassador the way I wanted to, I wanted to travel around the world and make everybody friends. I feel like I've made a lot of people friends and have garnered really, really great friendships through my job. First job, cruise line, second job, resort, third job, Newport Harbor Corporation, and I've been there for three decades. I'm a dinosaur, okay? It's now called Newport Restaurant Group. It went from Newport Yachting Center to Newport Harbor, Newport Harbor Corporation to Newport um, Restaurant Group. And we used to pr produce all these events on the waterfront, like concerts. We launched, I don't know if you've heard of Ben Fold, Jason Mraz, Train, Bare Naked Ladies. Those were our newlyweds. They were new bands emerging. And then we'd have, we, had, we called them the newlyweds and the nearly deads. We'd have the people who were older, Chicago, Beach Boys, I don't know. Like, so we pr produced 150 concerts, Irish Fest. You go to work and you're producing a concert, pinch me. That's like the best job ever. Um, got married. Oh, another thing we did too that you might have known is Extreme Games, ESPN Extreme Games. We did the second one, the X Games on our site. That's a story for another time. And had our son in, um, 25 years ago. So that was, that was a blessing 26 years ago. He's older than most of you, I think, right? Probably all of you. So I had our son 26 years ago and then started teaching and speaking at the University of Rhode Island, loving it. Love being with students like you two or three times a week. Highlight of my week. I had to give up golf. I was the worst golfer in the entire world, the worst. So it was very good for the world that I gave up golf. At some point, I've got to tell your husband the story of who my pro was who told me, give up golf now and save yourself and many others a lot of aggravation. That's what he exactly quoted me. So he'll know who he is. Um, and then the whole biggest thing that we're gonna talk about today too is purpose. At this point of my life, I feel that I have found my icky guy. And I'm not describing my husband because he's not icky, okay? Icky guy, you wanna write this down because it's something that you want to study no matter what year you are. Ikigai, I-K-I-G-A-I, is the Japanese secret to happiness. It is your purpose to live. You are not expected to have that at 21 years old. But you do need to know that you have a passion for music, a passion for sports, something that you're passionate about so you can kind of focus on, like, and build your career around that. So, your career, mine was very steps. Colleen, I put her name up because Colleen Hopkins, write this down if you're a sports person, because Colleen is my client, was, well, she was our competitor, then she became um, our consultant, and now she works with us. And Colleen's whole career is a winding road in sports journalism, all the way from the Tennis Hall of Fame, where, and she also played basketball in college, to having her own consultancy where she worked up with um, Billie Jean King, the, the, Newport, I mean, the New York team, she had the lobsters, the tennis team, the lobsters, but I think it was also the New York lobsters that she had, the US Open, if you've heard of this, in the Super Bowl. So all of these she got through networking and connections and being respected, building her brand, so people knew she got things done. I put this up because Colleen Hopkins 
If you ask me at the break to find her on LinkedIn, we'll link in with you. And those of you interested in sports or corporate sponsorship or business, you could have a phone call with her or Zoom. She's very open. And then I want you to write this down because it's important. It's okay to be a hot mess. It's okay. All right? And by that, I mean that you're all over the place and you don't know what you want to do. Patrick, my friend Patrick, who I'm not going to give you his last name and everything right now because I'm calling him out, <laughs> but Patrick gave me this slide and said, tell your students, because he gave me this about 10 years ago, that life does work out. And you may start your first job, and it's not for you. And it might not be till your fourth job. Try to stick it out if you can. There is an adage. You can write this down, too. People never leave jobs. People leave people. They don't leave jobs, they leave people. They leave negative managers. Raise your hand if you've had one. Okay. What did your negative manager do? Like, what's just a, a thing you're remembering right now? Um, we like closed incorrectly one time, so he told us like, I have a stack of applications in the office, you're all replaceable. Do nice. That made you want to go back the next day. Yeah. Yep, you're all replaceable, do your job. I have a stack of applications. He doesn't now or she doesn't now. What did your terrible boss do? And was he a weatherman? Whether he's wrong or right, he's not going to get fired? <laughs> okay, because there's weathermen in a company as well. So that, it's a joke, but I think it was someone from Guinness who told me that. Um, my, one time the cash register was like off by like 20 bucks, and he said he was going to like, next time it happened, he was going to take whatever money like out of our paychecks. Like that was not in the register. That made you want to go back to work the next day. Yeah. So you see why people leave a lot of times. Now, I say that. But Sebastian, if you get a job for 30 grand more than you're making now, you're leaving. Or maybe not. This is a true story that happened one month ago. One of my students, you can, I, well, I, I'll tell her your name on the break when we're not being videotaped. <laughs> okay. One of my students is working for one of our clients. And I had introduced them. She got the job. A job just came up with another one of our clients the other day for $30,000 more. She was top of mind. I called her and I said, let's say her name was Erica. I said, Erica, there's this job open. I think you should apply for it. She's like, I'll, I'm not crazy. I'll go, you know, I'm not foolish. I will go for the Zoom interview and listen. She listened. She called me back. I love that job, but I can't leave this job yet. I've only been here two years. They were kind to me during COVID. They didn't lay anyone off. And I said, it's $30,000 more. She's like, actually, it's more than $30,000 more than I'm making. And I'm not leaving this job yet. So pretty big, right? Because our companies that loyal to us, don't worry about it. You can write this down as well, OK? You are your company. You are your company, meaning you are your brand. You are your company. And if you go to work, Mike, and I'm not saying you do this. I'm not casting an aspersion. But you're sitting there on Facebook all day or you know, looking at your Instagram or snapping or, or what's the new TikTok, whatever you're doing, TikToking. I don't think you call it TikToking, <laughs> but you're doing that. That's on you. If you don't want to learn, that's on you. So I'm at an agency in New York visiting my former client, Natalia. And Natalia doesn't care how she gets started. She's so humble. So she takes the secretary's position as the greeter at Deutsch in New York. So she's the greeter. Why is that great? She meets everyone who works for the company, gets, knows them, gives them a big smile in the morning. She was not the greeter long. She may have been the greeter for six weeks. She, she just advanced in that company till she became one of three assistants of Donnie Deutsch, the owner of the company. And when you're an assistant, you're not just typing letters. You are doing a lot of things for Donnie Deutsch. Big, big deal. Big, big agency in New York. So, I went, I went in to visit her because I like to visit students and see where they land. Or if you stay in touch with me, I'll visit you. <laughs> it's not a threat. And I walk in and I'm, we're walking by all these cubicles. And the students, I mean, this, the people working, they're on their Facebook, they're on Instagram. And I'm like, I can't believe this. It's after nine. The workday has started. They're all on their social media. Wouldn't you think that's not really right? And she said, Gail, I just walked you through our social media department. All right, that's funny. <laughs> I watched, so I judged. You can't judge. She had just walked me through the social media department. So it's okay to start at a lower job. It's okay to love a job you're in. Now, 
you'll have people in your life, most specifically your parents, that will say, hey, $30,000, go there. But, and I don't know, at your age, I think I would have taken the jump. I really do. But she loves what she's doing, and it's a currency for her. So this is an important graph as well, and you can Google it online. I talked to you about your ikigai. Your ikigai is your reason to live, your purpose, and it lives right here. It lives right here in the heart of this Venn diagram. It's composed of you finding out through your life, whether it's your life here, your four years here, or it's your life after um, college, what you love to do. Because when you really love something, has anyone found yet something they love in a job you're in now, something that you love is part of that job? What's, what do you love? I, I'm going to school to be a high school history teacher, but I work with elementary kids right now, and I just love. Love. Kids. So you know you love teaching elementary no. students. <laughs> I just love. Um, I'm going to school to be secondary, Okay. but um, I just love working with kids. Like, okay, you love kids. Yeah. So you know you love kids. Yes. Does everyone in this room love kids? No. no. You're getting some of these. <laughs> so this is okay. So you love kids. The next is, the world needs you. You're always going to have a job. So you're very fortunate that what you love, the world needs. The world will pay you. Well, not, that, not too much, but it's OK. You're going to have your summers off. You can go bartend <laughs> or do something fun. <laughs> and that the world will, you will get paid. And then what you do well. Because you love it, you'll do it well. So if you look at the graph this way, that's happiness. That's your ikigai. That is your purpose. Your, as the French would say, and I'm going to butcher my friends, your raison d'être, your reason to live. All right. So your story, I want you to take a minute. And if you need an index, well, you have an index card there. You have an extra one? Yeah, so grab an index card. And I want you to answer this question for me. Just answer these questions. Write them down. Because then I'm going to pair you up for a minute to discuss it. So. Write down, and so Michael, you're going to get your pen and you'll write down what's next for you. And by that I mean, is your next your graduation? Is your next you're getting married? Is your next you're moving? What's your next? Your next you have a job or you want to get a job? You are your choices. And I want you to think of a great choice that you made, a wonderful choice that you made that you're proud of, some kind of a choice you made. And then the last one, it's on you. What does that mean to you? What does that sentence mean to you, that it's on you? So take a minute to answer these questions. How are you? Good, how are you? I know, I gave a little smile. <laughs> yep, so take a minute and just write down, what's next for you? Are you graduating? Are you finding a job? Is there something really exciting? Are you start, is it um, a re like you're so psyched you're starting the soccer team? Like you're, you're going to be a starter. What's something next? You're going to a conference, a leadership conference. Just what's something next? What's a choice you made that you're really proud of? It could be you chose to came here, come here, and it's worked well for you. And then it's on you. I just want you to take a minute to write, what does that mean? What do I mean when I'm saying it's on you? I'm just giving you a minute to do this. Good for you. I'm in the restaurant business. I, well, but I am too. So yeah, we'll talk yeah. So afterwards. we need to talk. Yeah, Newport yes. Restaurant Group. Write that on your card so you'll know. Okay. Michael, how are you doing? Good. 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 Okay. All right. So what I'll do instead of because we're going to have another um, group. What I'll do is I'll just I'll pick on like three of you or raise your hand if you want to share it. I mean I'm going to pick on you, Dylan, because I love what you're doing next. Oh, okay, you're not done. Hall pass. Okay. Are you done, Sebastian? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, aside from, you know, my in school work, I'm in the restaurant business and I want to get my bartending license again this year. Okay. Ryan? Good tips, definitely. All right. Then you can b come bartend at our boat show <laughs> September 15th to the 18th. All right. And so, what's next? Then what? So that's what you're, that's your next. What's a choice someone made that they're really proud of? Ruby, do you have a choice? Sarah? Yeah, um, my choice was becoming a social work major. Okay. Good for you. So that's, and 
I'll ask, what does it's on you mean? Who wants to answer that? What is it's on you? Being accountable for your yeah. actions. Yeah, perfect. I can't even say it better than that. It's on you. No one's going to help you, and nobody needs you. Real rough words. But when we had Larry Golko here a few years ago, my friend from Harvard, he opens his speeches with, nobody needs you. Now, if you're an engineer, if you're a data scientist, yes, there are people who need you. So it's like a trite point. But you have to remember that it's on you to go out and be needed in developing your skills all the time. I want you to write this down. You, have to, you all have to pick up one of these books and make sure. Some of this table already grabbed them. They're right there. If you went to a store to buy this book, it would be $25 or $30, and it would be a deal at this. This book is, how many, how many months did it take to put this together, Kathleen? This was our COVID project. This was the, a COVID so, project. So it, it, probably, it probably took about, initially, about eight or nine months. This book helps you find an internship. It'll help you navigate grad school. It's going to help you find a job. But you have to open it, read it, mark it. Take two. Take one for a friend. These are just invaluable books. And Gail's yeah, oh yeah, my information is in here, so you'll have that. Yeah, Gail was one of the sponsors of that book. Yeah, <laughs> but this book, I was honored. So this, was, this is a wonderful book for you to have with you. And you know, you look at it, and I don't think students realize sometimes that this is just such, well, you know what we should have done, Kathleen? Put twenty four ninety five on the back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you then, next then, then next time. Next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> one of the things that's going to be really important in life is this for you. So. I can always email some of the slides to Kathleen later. Not the whole deck, but some of the quotes. And this is, there's three things that are going to matter in the end of your life. And I, I think this is another great thing just to write down, but how much you loved. And it's not just a person, one-on-one. -on -one. It's just how much do you love life? How much do you live? How much do you get out there and do you look down and like, oh, I have to go to this meeting instead of I get to go to this meeting? Are you Eeyore? complaining about everything. I was, at your age, I was like that until my father had cancer my sophomore year of college and was given one year to live. I could be or Eeyore sometimes. I'm not saying you are. But I could just be, oh, complaining about stupid things. You know, stupid things. There was a woman who got, and I don't think she's in this room right now, I'm looking. She got into the elevator yesterday with me. And she pr I pressed three and she pressed two. And she's like, oh. Wait, I need to go there too. I'm so stupid. And I wanted to say to her, don't say you're so stupid. Like you're talking, that's negative self-talk. Why go there? Why, there's going to be enough people who put you down. Don't put yourself down. So anyway, how much you lived, loved, how gently you lived, and how gracefully you got let go of things not meant for you. When I was looking for my first jobs, and this happened with your parents as well, suppose, I'm saying supposedly, we didn't all get our, the first job that we wanted. Kathleen, Marty, that's Kathleen's husband, he was just, people kept choosing him for jobs. He was in a very different situation. Um, so that's, that's a gift. But I didn't get, and I was so disappointed when I didn't get my first jobs. I'm so glad now that I didn't. And you can probably think back on points of your life, right? Something you didn't get, that it's a really good thing you didn't. So this is just like a nice thing, a nice thing to look at. I do want to mention my dad, who was given one year to live back in my sophomore year of college, he had a very rare form of bladder cancer, is still alive. Wow. It's been 30 long years. Wow. And he had started, he had started met Mother Teresa of Calcutta by accident, that's a story in itself, and started a um, clinic in Haiti that takes care of 250,000 people a year. He also helps a lot of people in the US as well. Um, he's a doctor. But I'll tell you, it's, um, it, it's quite the, you know, when you, to have that back again makes you a real grateful person. Okay, four things we're covering today, and I'm starting with your brand. This is my, our intern's dog dressed for the chowder cook-off, an event in Newport, okay? Your brand is not what you think you are. So what I'm doing is I'm passing around this yellow piece of paper. Do not put your name on it. I'll pass the yellow and the blue. And I just want you to write one word about you and get up and stick it to the wall, OK? So just write just one word that describes you, but don't put your name. We're going to see what's in this room, OK? We're going to see what's in this room. So pass those around. And then can you, both of you, come help me lay these out? 
So let's see what we have in this room, okay? We've got athletic, responsible, caring, kind, dependable, precise. That's a great word. If you were in an interview and they said, what's a word that describes you? And precise. I'm not precise. I think that's a great word. Um, depth. Accountable, motivated, hard worker. I'm, you're hired. You're all hired. Do I have everybody up here? Almost everyone? OK. So this is good stuff. But your brand isn't that. Your brand isn't what you think you are. Your brand is what other people think of you. So I'm coming in, and I'm getting smiles from most of you. So I'm thinking you're pleasant people. Your brand, you're here from 12 to 2 today for a career networking course. I'm thinking you're pretty aggressive, and you want to take charge of your career. That's pretty good. Um, there was a young man yesterday. I told Kathleen, I said, Where's, is there an elevator? Because I was carrying all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, it's around the corner. I said, well, I'm going to the career center. Is it third floor? He's like, I don't know. So I was a little fresh. And I said, you should know. So I said, you should know. What year are you? Well, I'm a sophomore. I said, you need to know now. Don't go to the career center in your senior year. You go now. I don't think he appreciated me. I don't think he liked me. Like, who's this woman coming and saying that? But I don't care. So when people have a whole relationship with you, are you the kind of person that you lean in and you say hello and it's so nice to meet you and you look me in the eyes, okay? It's nice to meet you. Good handshake. If you have trouble looking in the eyes, just look at the person's forehead. Do you know I'm looking at your forehead right now? No. Okay, look at my forehead while you talk to me. You're looking at my forehead right now? Yeah. Oh, I can't tell. So turn to one of your partners and look at their forehead while you're talking to them. So you could look with Michael. You can come look. Yeah. But you're even so far away. So um, get in your mark, and you will um, d just go up to Mark for a minute and say hello and look at his forehead. And you can. Do you know what we should do, too? We should do a photo with me, Kathleen, and the whole room, and we'll just do a stance like that, like we're having fun. What, if we, should we do that now? Or when? It's up to you. Why okay. don't we let her do this exercise? Okay. So, so did you all know? Did it feel more comfortable? Because there's, I have a former boss, and he did not like looking people in the eyes. It was very uncomfortable from him, for him. So the forehead thing works. The other thing is you don't have to say if it happens or not, but if you get sweaty palms, you can bring a small water to your interview. The little kind of small Poland spring waters, don't bring this big bottle of karma in. Or if you do, bring a second karma. And you could say, I brought karma and kindness today. And you can leave like a little package behind. I just would, if they say, do you have anything else you want to talk about today? I say, well, I've really enjoyed your time. I appreciate your time. And I have a little karma and kindness package. I would do something like that because it's my brand. It may not be yours. I love giving people things. In fact, I've got the presents here for Deb, yeah, and Kathleen, and Christine. Just little presents. So just a, a nice little present for you. You're going to have to re-gift yours. <laughs> it's got caffeine in it. There you go. It's got caffeine. So you'll have to re-gift. Your daughter will have caffeine. So that, so um, it's nice, like, you can, you can leave a little leave behind. It's fine to do something like that, leave a leave behind. So, but if you're, if you're going into an interview and you tend to have sweaty palms, I had an intern with very sweaty palms, carry in the small water, or if you're at a networking event, be holding the small water, and then when you go to shake hands, you can say, oh, excuse me, the water bottle. Nice, okay? So that is um, a good thing to do. The next is a brand is not a logo. So these logos evoke different opinions and different feelings from people. Not everyone is a fan of, what's this number one? What's the first one here? Apple. Okay. Are there, is there anyone in this room who gets aggravated with Apple? No. So we've got Apple. You do. So there's sometimes. Volvo, what does Volvo mean to you? Yeah. Safety. Who said safety? Okay. But that's you and me. And that's Kathleen. This generation does not know. Like, oh, there's so many safe cars now. When I was growing up, when I was your age, Volvo was safety. You look at the logo and you think safety ahead of time of anything else. Okay? Do you know what the heart is? Southwest Airlines. 
and they walk the walk. Really good people. I've been to corporate quite a few times. Really good people. And then Starbucks. Is there anyone who loves Starbucks? Raise your hand. Okay. And how about people who get really aggravated at the price of the coffee? But you're buying an experience. Yeah, you're, you know, you're bu you still do it, but you're aggravated. So next time, instead of getting aggravated, embrace the experience. Think, I'm going to sit here for a half hour. I'm going to smell the coffee. I'm going to see if I bump into anyone here. And I'm going to have my coffee and um, do my work, listen to my music, and don't get so mad at Starbucks because they're selling an experience for the most part. All right. And then a brand is a collection of different perceptions. So when I heard Brennan was going to be here today, I was like, oh my God, Eric. And then we called Eric right away. I have not talked to his father probably in over, it was pre-COVID. I remember where I was. I was at the Chicago airport. And we had made an appointment to talk, but I, my plane was late, everything. And, that's, and I FaceTimed with your dad in the airport. So it was so nice. To, but that's, I haven't talked to this man in two years, but getting on FaceTime with him right now was like we two years didn't go by. And we're laughing and being silly. And we have Bob with us, which makes it more silly. And then Bob Evans is somebody I want you to write that name down. Because when we get to the connecting exercise, shame on you if you don't connect with Bob. So Dylan's going to say, why should I connect with Bob? He works for a print company. Who do you think he sells to, Sarah? Who's he selling to? Who's he selling to? He's a print company. Who needs print? Everyone. Everyone. Uh, you have, is it Nuvance, your hospital, your ho Nuvance, with all the hospitals. So those of you who are interested in nursing or, or medicine, well, I'm not interested in nursing, Gail. Well, do you know that any major you have, you can work for Nuvance? Any major. And Bob is the type, he's like, Gail, I love students. I was, gonna try, I was trying to get him to come here today, but I told him too late. It's not really good when you ask someone at 8.30 in the morning if they want to get here at 12. Not going to happen. So Bob is a great person to network with because he knows all the companies, if you name the company. Today, he surprised me because he's friends with a company, uh, some of you had said sports, called Legends in New York. And he's, they do all these cool sports um, things for all the teams around the country. Kathleen just helped a young man through networking get a job at the Yankees in the IT department. You now have a connection in the IT department because he said to Kathleen, I want to help students. I want to give back. And you may say, well, I don't want to work for a sports team. I want to do public relations. Well, you can do public relations for the sports team. There's so many different things you can do. So. Your brand, what you definitely want to have is make sure you have that firm, not wet handshake, that you have positive um, attitude, and put your shoulders back, stand tall, and go in with self-confidence because you all have something to offer. You know so you have something you can do that I can't. You could come into my office and do something with me. Have humility, but make sure you have hunger, and write this down. If you haven't watched it already, Steve Jobs' graduation speech to Stanford University. Steve Jobs dropped out of Stanford. You're shaking your head. You've already seen it. Yeah, be hungry. Be hungry. Just you have to stay hungry. And it's staying hungry for knowledge, staying hungry for learning. Shame on you. And I'm saying shame on you. And I'll look away because I don't want to look at anyone when I say this. But if you're on TikTok all day and that's all you're doing, there's so much learning out there. Download some podcast. Don't have any suggestions. You don't know any podcasts? Then ask me. I'll give you a list of business, life, different kinds of podcasts. Put those on. Um, if you say, hey, Gail, I appreciate that, but I also like my downtime. I like quiet. That's respected as well. But instead of, well, there's so much we can be doing. We all have the same amount of time. So we can be learning. So Steve Jobs, if he hadn't dropped out of Stanford, there'd be no Apple. Because what did he do? Who remembers what Steve Jobs did? Uh, he went to school like part-time to like one particular course. That and what was the course? I can't exactly remember. I think it had something to do with uh, designing and fonts. Calligraphy. And Calligraphy. So you tell your mom and dad, that you're dropping out of WestCon, and you're going to go take a calligraphy course. What's happening? Yeah, yeah. OK? So look back at Steve Jobs um, and, th and think about that. And then what came out of it? What came out of it? Apple. It changed all our worlds. So we, you know, make sure we maintain eye contact as best we can with people and be an active listener. Now, we've been going about 50 minutes. It's time for you to stand up, 
take a five minute break, go to the restroom, um, and then we're gonna sit down and we're gonna launch with another exercise. But we're going, you, and the exercise will start with acting, active listening. Sound good? Okay, so I'm setting my timer for five minutes, real quick. I just wanted you to put your name and email on it now. Yeah. What I want you to do with the surveys is as you're learning something, the sweaty palms, the eye contact, something, ikigai, which I just took down how that's spelled. Um, ikigai. Okay. Who remembers what ikigai means? Yep, Japanese secret to happiness is finding your purpose. Yep, yep, put everybody's name. You don't have to fold it, you just throw it in and collect it. And then you all have a survey in front of you to just fill your name and email out, but as you're learning things, as you're learning things, you can, um, you, can write, you can write them down. Oh, did Michael not get one? Hang on, here we go. We're not gonna forget you. Here it is, right here. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna continue with communication, and this is very important with communication, is we have the capacity to listen to 400 words per minute. Most people talk at 125, 150. Last night when I was sitting with Kathleen at Barbary's, we were probably talking 250, like, because we were talking, and of course, she's not, but I'm interrupting because she says something. I'm like, oh my God, I love that. And then we go from topic to topic, but that's not Kathleen, that's me, God bless her, for, keep, for, keep, for keeping up. <laughs> so, but we have that capability to listen to 400, but most people talk at 125, 150. So what happens? We get super bored. Even right now, you who are sitting for 50 minutes, that's a long time to sit and listen. So I'm trying to get you up, do some group activities. It's a long time to listen. If we can practice listening and really being present, it sends, it saves a lot of time. The next thing is 55% of our body language, 55% you know, of our communication is our body language. I am so excited to be here. Michael, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. 38% is our tone. I like your shirt. Looks, it's a nice shirt. You don't really like this shirt, though. Oh, actually, I do like the oh. shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, or nice to see you. It's yeah. nice to be back here. Do I sound like I want to be back here? Yeah. And 7% are actual words. We lose. Where's the mathematician in the room? The business major. We lose 93% of communication through our email and body language. So when we're email, texts, we're losing 93% of communication because we don't have the body language, we don't have the tone. So have you ever had a challenge, an email challenge, where you looked at the email or the text and you got mad? And then you spent 45 minutes, you might have spent 45 minutes or 20 minutes walking around. Did you see this email? Did you see this email? And it wastes time. So. You don't want to do that. There's an expression, two dings and a ring. When I wrote my book, Your Someday Is Now, what are you waiting for? The best part of this book, and we're giving away 10 copies today, okay, is in the back of every chapter is business advice. It's business advice from over 100 of my friends who worked for either Pepsi or Narragansett Beer or Southwest Airlines. And I love one of the quotes. It's Mark Hellendrum, the president of Narragansett Beer. He writes in it, take a power nap for 20 minutes every day and wake up ready to kick some ASS. How's that? Is that a good one? Our president, Paul O'Reilly, president of Newport Restaurant Group, writes, clean your desk once a decade. So it's cute. Um, what I'll do now, though, I'm going to put... I'm going to pull five names right now for books. And the books were purchased by Westcon for you. And 100% of the sales benefits nonprofit. These sales will be going to Martin Luther King Center. So that's the Dr. Martin Luther King Center. I'm on that board. So this is um, an important thing for you. So the first one to win is Erica. So go up and get your book and a kind bar. And the second one is Sebastian. 
And the third one is Dylan. Hey, thank you. If anything else, the book is excellent for insomnia. You pick it up and you'll knock out. Okay? <laughs> Alicia, yay! Liana? Yeah. And we'll do a fifth one, then we'll do five more after. And then we've got Mike M. Yep. Yay. And you can grab a Kind Bar as well. So that, and again, we have to, what's that? There's two Mike M's here, right? Oh, there's two Mike M's? Are you a Mike M too? Yes. Ooh. Uh-oh. We're making it interesting. Well, I think that we just have to grab another. What do you think? You've got your Mike M and another. And Kathleen, I have an extra one in my bag, so I'll make one. I'll add another. I'll make this decision here to add another one. There you go, Michael. So two dings in a ring. Pick up that phone. The next is listening to hear, to really, really listen. And then calm. The president of Amica Insurance, Bob DiMuccio, when I was interviewing for the book, said, here's my advice for you, Gail. Always be the calmest person in the room. Always be the calmest person in the room. Who has the tendency to explode? that you can explore that. I'm, I've got a temper sometimes, you do too. So I, ha so I asked our HR director, how can I curb my temper? And this was when I was a young manager. And she said, Gail, it's easy. Count from 40 backwards. So I'm like, oh, count from 40 backwards. 40, 39, 38, not out loud, Gail, not out loud. So we don't count, but if you start at 40, and you go all the way, um, that you'll never make it to 30. Just stay calm. You stay calm, don't you, Alicia? Um. You're going to have to with your job. So next I'm going to ask you, in communication, remember, listening to hear. Take a blank piece of paper. You can do it on the back of the survey. And I'm going to say a word. And then when I say this word, write down every other word that comes into your head. So I'm going to say a word, and when I say this word, do not look at anyone else's piece of paper. You'll ruin the exercise. I'm going to say a word, and then write down every word that comes into your head. And the word is run. The word is run. You've got one minute to write down every word you think of with the word run. Ten more seconds. Let your stream of consciousness go. Okay. What you'll do next is pair up with one person and find how many exact matches can you find. Not shoe and um, running shoe. That's not an exact match. It would be shoe, shoe, running shoe, running shoe. So find how many exact matches can you find. So what we can do, um, because we have one odd, like we have an extra person in the room, why don't we get Erica and Alicia and Michael together? We'll get the three of you. We'll break the rule a little bit, because I think we have an extra. So how many people had four or more matches of the exact word? Four or more. How many had three or more? How many had three or more without the word fast? 
KCO2. But what were they? Uh, hard and speed. Hard and speed. Okay. How many, who else had to hard and speed? How, who else had two or more? What did you have? Two, track and sprint. Track and sprint. And how many had one match? We had one match. And what was it? Shoe. Shoe. What Ours was were fast. Fast, okay. Shoes. Shoes. Did anyone have no matches? What? No matches at all. This is one word. Words become sentences. Sentences become paragraphs. Paragraphs become pages. Pages become books. And we're not even in the same library anymore. We're sitting and we're talking, and you're thinking of different things in your head from one word. So the lesson in this is we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. We don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. The way we're walking through life and viewing life is based on all the experiences we've had in life. This is a picture of the dude. The dude is my sister's bulldog. Every single day, he goes to the door thinking he can fit. He thinks he's svelte. He's not svelte. He's never going to go through the cat door. But he thinks he is, and he has only a face a mother can love. Because he's illustrating, he sees things as he sees himself versus how they really are in life. So is it any like any um, surprise, is it any surprise that we get confused in conversations, we get confused in lectures, we get confused in daily life through communication, through jobs, through anything, because we're seeing, through, through, seeing life through our lens. Very interesting way. So that would be another thing you could say in an interview. You could talk about how we see things as they are. Now, did any of your partners have a random odd word that you were like, where did that come from? OK, you're pointing her out. Go ahead. What is it, Sarah? What's your word? Um, there's many that are odd. OK. I went on a tangent. All right. Um, I'm not going to read all of them. But I'll read the least embarrassing. I'm going to say magic. Magic? Why? I don't know. I love it. I don't run. But see, you're, you're, um, but see you said, I don't run. Yeah. When I said the word run, I put energy in it. Run, I've had people come back, run for office, operate equipment, run in pantyhose, runny lipstick, runny um, tears, a river runs, all these different words. Magic is going on the board. I've never had anyone say magic. It's kind of a great word. I have like 40 words. Oh, well, read us some. I'm not them. Oh, <laughs> can you read us two more? Two more? Oh, carpet. OK, you're scaring me. <laughs> What's the one? Death. I wonder why death. But this is where your mind went. <laughs> and, that, and that's not to be embarrassed. It's just to show where your mind went with one word. So when people are talking, you might be thinking, I'm looking at you thinking, wow, Erica has a very nice countenance. She's got beautiful glasses. She's a kind person. I'd want to know her more. You know, Michael. Michael's very interesting. Great glasses. You know, Alicia, really cool laptop cover. You're making your brand and your appearance as you go out, and also through the words we speak. Anything over here? Anyone have forest? Run, forest, run? Oh, that's a good one. Run Generational, forest, I guess. <laughs> um, run DMC, or is that generation? Yeah, yeah. Did you have run DMC? Yeah. So does anyone else want to say something their neighbor had, their partner had? Yeah. The, what is yeah, it? I, um, I put down, for whatever reason, I, someone thinks I put down fast, but my mind also went to other things that travel fast. And horses can go pretty fast, so I put down canter and gallop, which are two speeds that a horse can travel okay. at. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. I may have to add that, too. <laughs> That's a good one. OK. So now we're going to come to one of the most important things. You're, you've heard about networking. You've studied networking. If you worked with Kathleen, you've heard it again and again. But you can never hear it enough. So these slides, I want you to pay attention and soak it in. And I'll make sure I get this over to Kathleen for those of you who stayed. So. When you walk into that room to network, walking in here today, like Sebastian works with Kathleen, and he's working with her on that leadership program, there's no reason why the rest of you should not be part of that. Even if, you're, if they're graduating, though, next month, is it too late? I'd have to see. Yeah, you'd have to see. But you'd go to that. Yeah, talk one-on-one, -on -one because it's still interesting to learn about this. 
So what can you contribute? When you're walking into a networking event and you might be like, oh my God, the last thing I want to do tonight is go to a networking event or this afternoon. What do you have to contribute? What can you accomplish in that room? Can you teach someone something as well? You know, I'm bringing in a new intern this summer who is so social savvy and really Canva savvy. She knows Canva, she's really good at it. She sold me. She took two of my classes at Salve Regina, a different school, and then she came over and said, I want to be your intern and I'm going to tell you why. And she gave me, a bit, made, ah, gave me the, this offer I could never refuse. So what can you accomplish? What can you help the person with? I'm not the great Oz. I don't know everything. So it's like learning from other people. What now leads to what next? And that means what you do now, what you put in your head, words you say, things you do, lead to your next. So focus on your now. Speaking of your now, I just found out, and I will, who did not get a book yet? Who did not get one? Kathleen wants to buy books for everyone. So how's that? Wow. Can we clap for Kathleen? So yes, you did win, and it's great that you did. Did you need one as well? Yes. OK, and did you? OK, I'll grab an another one in a, in a bit. Don't let me forget. So what now, your someday is now, leads to what next? And what are your transferable skills? Keep honing them, learning them. Practice standing out. And the way you stand out is real easy. You never <coughs> walk, God bless you, you never walk into a room and say, like this, with your, here I am. You walk into a room and say, there you are. So good to see you. It is so great to see you. How are you? And it's all about them. How are you? It's so great to see you, Dylan. It is so great. Sebastian, we gotta, we gotta catch up. Mark, I'm a jerk. I just pointed the other way. I'm shaking hands with you, and I'm telling Mark we have to catch up. That's happened to almost everyone, or it will. It's not the right way to be. We wanna make sure we are focused and saying hello. We wanna be present, unplug, and put your phone away if you can. Sometimes you can't. There's a conference I go to, and it's a tech conference. Everyone has their phone out. Mine's out, too. But if you're at a conference or like you're in your room today, I don't know why no one's on their phone. I think it's fabulous. I didn't tell you not to be on your phone. I didn't tell you not to be on your computer. I do tell my classes at the university they've got to unplug for an hour and a half. But you've just been paying attention. It's like unheard of. And you're not shaking. You're not like, my, my phone's in there. I'll look at it at two hours. Didn't even check it on the break because I wanted time with Sebastian to learn about him. And then make sure you find mentors. If you say, I can't find a mentor, I just gave you people. We're gonna, I'm going to have you link in in a minute, teach you how to link in with me. And then if you want to link in with Colleen, I'll help you link in with her. So there's so many. And Kathleen can give you the, the name of that young man at the Yankees and blame me. So I have two. I have one, one student with the New York Yankees, a graduate, and then one with the New York Yankees. They can practice their um, linking, connecting with these. So your four-year plan, I hope you're enjoying life on campus. I hope you've, I'll go to the second one at the end. I hope you've joined some club team or activity or worked if you did not have time to do that. If you haven't found a college mentor, it's not too late. Get to know your professors. They care about you. Get to know professors that may not have had you. Get to know me. Attend sessions at this career center. We're speaking to the choir. You're all here. But um, step out of your comfort zone. Go to something that, like, I hope you're all going to the career fair, right? You're going to go to the virtual career fair? So, and spend all day if you can. Don't say, I have to go to class. Try to spend all day, but you also can't skip class. And then empower yourself. This is, the number two is probably the most important, is make sure you're eating right, you're getting exercise, even if it's walking around campus. Walk, park farther away. But try to get into a rhythm. And I know this is hard, and I wish, I, had, I wish someone had told me to do this in college. Because we'd go to bed so late and not think anything of that. If you can get into a rhythm, whether you're you know, up at 6 or you're up at 8, and you're going to sleep and waking up at the same time every day, you're going to be so much healthier. And you're going to say, well, I can't because I work in this restaurant. But the days that you're not, just try to get into some kind of rhythm. It will help you. OK. Networking, what's the reason we network? Mark, why do we network? Yeah. OK. Um, Sarah, why do we network? Majority of job opportunities come from networking. Bingo. Um, yeah, go. Say, it doesn't matter what you know, it matters who you know. Doesn't matter what you know, it matters who you know. Who's going to call you back in 24 hours? Who's going to call you back in 48 hours? Yeah. Okay. 
So you meet new people, you can spend time with your colleagues, although when we go to networking events at work, we're going to one in a few weeks, and I said, there's four of us going, we're sitting at four different lunch tables. Really? I'm like, yes, we're gonna sit at four different lunch tables, we're gonna meet 40 new friends that way, 40 new people. You learn new things, again, when you actively listen. You meet insiders, and what I mean by this is, what's a company you'd love to work for? Someone raise their hand, a company you'd love to work for. Apple. So in order to work for Apple, if you went, no, that was Google. So I'd have to say, yeah, in my book, there's people who work for um, Apple. Perfect. So you'd go in, or it might be Google. No. It may not yes. be Apple. Okay. Works. You'd go in and you'd find them on LinkedIn and you'd say, I'm reading Gail Olofsson's book, Your Someday Is Now, and I saw your amazing quote. And I'd love to just have an informational talk with you and learn about your career path. You don't go for the jugular and say, I want to work at Apple or yes. Google or anything like that go right away. There's a young man right here at the point where we connect. I will connect you to him. He worked for Google. Is he going to see you? He's within a 45 minute drive. You get in the car, you ask him what does he want for his coffee. You, ha you get there 15 minutes ready. I mean earlier, you have that coffee waiting for him or lunch or whatever it is or you know, the menu out. And you, if you ask for people for their time, you ask what kind of coffee can I bring you? What, um, and if they say, oh, nothing, no, we have coffee here at the office, bring something. Bring a favorite book that you read. Look at something that they're interested in and make sure you thank them for their time. It's very, very important when you meet someone, whether you're interviewing informational interview or meeting them um, for a real interview, that you write a thank you note. So if you meet with me at 9 in the morning, there should be a thank you email by 5 o'clock. Thank you email. Pre-write it. Pre-write it before you come in and meet with me. But don't say, thank you, I enjoyed our interview. Dear Gail, great to talk with you today. Really enjoyed learning about your career path. And I love the opportunity to work for Newport Restaurant Group. What you said about the culture and communication is so attractive. Thank you for considering me. Write something. If you're having trouble with what to write, send me an email. Go see Kathleen. Go see, you don't have to send me an email. You have an amazing career center here. Go in and ask, hey, does this look great as a follow-up email? And then there's the secret. There's the secret that's gonna set you apart because no one's doing it. You get a pen out and a card, the power of the pen, and you write a handwritten thank you note. And yes, you can write a type thank you note as well, but that handwritten thank you note is a non-negotiable, and I don't care if your handwriting's not nice. Steady it and write as best as you can. And you have to reference two or three things. I love the fishing posters or fishing pictures in your office. I fish too. Your Zoom background was cool. Whatever it is, I loved what you talked about, you know, the mistake you made in college and how it changed your life. Listen, take notes while we're talking. And when they ask you, do you have any questions, don't look and say, no, I'm fine. I'm all set. Walk in with questions. Google, what are 10 questions I should ask in an interview? What was your first job? Why do you like working here? Come in and in your portfolio, I'm just looking, I don't see anyone with one. You'll have a portfolio with your extra copies of your resume. Don't assume they printed it off. And again, informational networking just as important. If you, oh, oh, of course, yes, yes. So one thing that Gail was talking about, two things. One is we talked about the informational interview. This is where you become the interviewer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You're love this. You, it's, it's, it's brilliant, it's brilliant. You become the interviewer. So the idea for you to go out and start interviewing people, do this, do this a lot. And if you do enough of these, somebody is gonna say, uh, let's talk later, maybe about a job, or give me your interview, I know somebody's hiring. So, so you, and you don't want that to be a job interview. This is the whole idea where you're gonna go to somebody else and learn their story and get their advice, but don't turn it into necessarily job. You don't want to do that because that changes stuff. And then you become, the, then then when you get interviewed, you're a little bit more careful. You know, you're a little bit more warmed up, and then that makes it a whole lot easier when when you're actually being then interviewed. So it's just kind of a little bit of flip, flip it around, but it's so powerful. I mean, In, no, thank you. One of the best ways to actually. It, not only that, and of course, before you leave an informational interview, never leave without saying, do you have, uh, is, is, you, is there another contact that you recommend that I can talk to? And then so keep expanding that. It's probably one of the best tools to actually find the 
unique opportunity yep. to do lots of interviews of people who were doing interesting things. Exactly of the job you want, but maybe they're just in the zone. So anyway, I just wanted to put some that because they're the most, you know, one of the most brilliant tools that you can do. When I first yeah. learned about them, I'm like, why didn't I know about this? Already? I didn't know about them. In informational interviews, had you heard of this before, of an informational interview that you go, see, and you haven't. So you go in and you ask someone, hey, oh, you got one? Oh, let me give you an extra for your office then. There's going to be some kid that comes in, some student. So informational interview, I am introducing you to Colleen. I'm going to introduce you to a few others. Um, and when you connect with them, you can set up a time for an informational interview. You can set up for a time with me. And you're asking me questions. What kind of jobs are out there, Gail? What it, so for the sake of time, we don't have time to network this whole room. I'm trying to do it for you meeting each other. So before we go to the next um, thing, I want you to take the advice you wrote on the piece of paper and bring it right up here. So you wrote the, your advice. Best of, did you write it yet? Best advice you ever got? Oh, OK. So be thinking of that. Oh, you, okay. But you, who had it done already? You guys, you, I think I, like, I had a private club over there yes, of people. Yes, 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 we had it, yes. So the best advice you ever got, and you can just, once you finish it, take a minute, stand up, stretch your legs again, and write the best advice you ever got, right, and then just put it right up here. Don't put your name on it. You don't need your name on, name on it. And if you are swearing, I won't say your name. Just make sure you put, like, little, okay. Swearing is never appropriate or attractive. It was something my mom told me, so I'll keep that. Like, okay. Yeah. In the workplace, I should say. With your friends, everyone has their own dynamic, but in the workplace. We get called into HR if we swear. So it's not, we, we're not allowed, except I don't think the kitchen people do. So here, let's make this pretty. Don't let anyone eat your lunch. I like that one. Now, did everybody get a picture before of the napkins I said you could take a picture of? Did everyone take a picture? And if you didn't, I'll have people who did raise their hands. Who got a picture of the napkins? Okay. So what you could do is if you want a picture of those, that's my class last Monday. I asked them what's the best advice you ever got? And there's so much in there that you could use in an interview, in your life story. And so Ruby, you've got that. Maybe you can text it to Kathleen and you can post it. That's my class on Monday. What we'll do is we'll also take a picture of this so that you have these as well. These are some questions you may actually get in when you're being interviewed. Yeah, what's the best advice you ever got? That's a common question. Yeah. Or who's someone you admire and why? Yeah. I admire my this because. And use one of these. You can make it up if you need to make it up. What you can't do is say, hmm, I don't know. You've got to be prepared for that. OK. Collect people. So these are different people that you can, I say, collect. If you're not into Microsoft Outlook or Google Contacts or anything yet, you can collect them on an Excel sheet. I met Gail Olofsson on April 7th through Kathleen Lindemeyer. Have my email. Have Kathleen's. Make sure they've linked in. Do they have permission to link in with you? So if you haven't linked in with Kathleen. OK, yeah. So this is, OK. Get out. It's always easier not to go. It would not, it'd be easy not to come here today. Attend a business expo, a chamber breakfast. Attend something else outside of Western Connecticut State University. You are a student. They will let you go. They'll let you go. If you call your local Danbury chamber and say, hey, I, I go to Western Connecticut State University. Is it possible to come to your breakfast meeting today? Is there a student fee? It might be $15. It might be 20 Or they may say, you know what? Come on in. Do they have a young professionals group? We have one in Newport. So pass out your card and collect cards. If you don't have a card, make a card. There's vistaprint.com. You can make cards for free, or you can pay $9.99, and then you don't have to have vistaprint.com on the back of your card. So, actually electronic yeah. cards, too. I can give them, I can give oh, you can give them an example of electronic. An, Perfect. Yeah, there's actually an app where you can actually do your own business. God bless you. And then I talked about the two thank you notes. Email one by five. Now, if you meet with me at four, you can email the next morning. That's OK. But if you meet earlier in the day, God bless you. If you meet earlier in the day, you want to have um, that email by 5 o'clock. 
Get noticed. Again, when you come into the room, have a nice positive attitude. Compliment someone if they've got a nice pin, a nice tie, say what a pretty scarf. If you really like it, don't make it up. Um, have your cards. When you collect cards, I like to kind of break away at one point and just, if I want to keep in touch with that person, like follow up with them. Like today when I met with Bob, he gave me a lot of names of people to follow up with. I'll bend the card and put it in my purse so I've bent it. And that will know now, if, but if it's someone who wants something from me, I'll keep it flat. Then I know the difference in my follow up. One of my friends does ABC and writes on it A, get in absolutely right away. B, it, you know, your life's going to be better if you do. C, not important, but you know, if you have time. But I like to collect people, and your name tag always goes to your right. Do you know why? So when I shake hands with you, you're looking here. So you're not, so that's why your name tag goes to your right. Okay, your attitude we talk through, fitting in, breathe. Introduce yourself to the host. If there are some people in this room who never met Kathleen, before you leave today, introduce yourself to Kathleen. Make sure she knows who you are. Write her a thank you, a quick thank you note or thank you email for putting this together today, okay? Stand in line and talk to everyone in line. You're at the same event. So I'm just going to go back to it's a chamber event or a Westcon event or something you go into your parents. Talk to everyone. Have you been to this event before? Try to, I don't, I'm not a big proponent of drinking a lot of alcohol at these events. Um, you might have, if you're going to have a beer, have one. Don't drink four. It's not a big slosh fest. So I always tell my students, if you're going to have two, go wine, water, wine, or beer, water, beer. But being drunk at a networking event isn't attractive. You want to be clear. I actually, most of the time, visibly will hold a bottle of water if it's one of our corporate events at our company because we have a two drink maximum. But I remember when people first started in our company on my team, I said, it's a two drink minimum. I made a I said the wrong word. It's not a two drink minimum. So we, true story, we go out with um, someone on our team, I won't say the name, and John Ferrillo from Guinness. He's having a Guinness. That person matches the Guinness. He, I don't know how many Guinnesses he had at lunch, but he had to go home. He couldn't come back into the office because he thought I had said two person minimum. And so he's like, you know, he's drinking away and I'm just being mortified. At the time, I should have just kicked his leg under the table and said, stop drinking. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, it's just a cute story. But the whole thing is you don't want to be known as the person who was drunk and inappropriate at the party. Um, when you walk over to a group, I recommend you do a group of three or more people or go and talk to someone who's standing alone. Walk over and talk to someone who's standing alone. Why not? Hey, have you come here before? You know, I'm Gail. Nice to meet you. And then, um, but the reason I say three or more is because if it's one-on-one, -on -one, Alicia and I might want to catch up. She may have made an appointment or I might have made an appointment with her to get to the networking event 10 minutes early because I really wanted to talk to her about her music prowess and her teaching skills. So I learn more from her, but now Erica walks over, and I'm like, oh, but we'll, we'll welcome our circle, but it's just nice. And then seated, meet everyone at the table. I go one step further, which is absurd, but I do it. If we're at a wedding, and I know there's eight people, I just have my napkin, and I write their four names. And then I'll say to them, if you see me going like this at any time, it means I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> because you know when the music's really loud and you're like, but you can't really hear anything. All right. We talked about big you, little I. It's like, big you, how are you? Great to see you. Not all about me, 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 me. You don't want to just be talking about you, you, you the whole time. You want to learn from other people. What an interesting field, job, what attracted you to it? What are some of the current trends? Who's your ideal client? Maybe you know someone so you can introduce them later. And then when, you, when it's time to exit, I recommend seven minutes. How are you? Good. You? Good. Your name? I'm late. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. don't even worry. You're not late. You're fine. Yeah. Um, and what's your major? Uh, digital marketing. Oh, my God. You already have a job. If you can do digital marketing, you have a job. Um, when are you graduating? Hopefully 2023. Okay. And where are you from? Glastonbury, Connecticut. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Okay. I'm from Lebanon originally oh, nice. before I moved to Newport. Exit 22. <laughs> So we're welcome for being here. So when, you, when it's time to leave, leaving can be awkward. You never say this, and it's in my book. I've got to go talk to some more important people. I'll see you later.
That actually happened to me at your age. I won't expand too much on the story except to say I was in position to give this man business for the next 25 years and never refer a client to him because I was standing with he, this man and his wife and his wife was my client. I was buying from her. So that's like a big deal. And he said, okay, I've got to go talk to some more important people. I'll see you later. You don't leave that way. It's very rude. You can say, I'm going to go get another ice water or I'm going to get another drink. Would you like to come up with me? Hey, have you seen the appetizers yet? I'm going to go over and get something. Or I'm running to the restroom. I'll be back. I'll see you in a bit. I'll see you later. Or um, there's my friend Erica over there. Come on over, I'll introduce you. And now it's Michael's exit plan. He may be like, I don't want to go see Erica. I, wa I was trying to get rid of you too. So there's ways that you can do exit plans, like so that you don't have to keep talking to the same person all night. Now, most important, get your phones out and who to link in with. Who has LinkedIn on their phone? Raise your hand. So pretty good. Erica, if you don't, you can sit next to, come sit next to Brennan so you can see what we're doing. Okay? So, and in fact, you can, if you write down this name, Patrick McElveen, you can write down Patrick's name and you can link in with Patrick, especially if you're in like sports, because Patrick did a lot with um, tennis and sports and things like that. So you could write his name down and I'll tell you how to link in with him. So who you want to link in with is classmates, former employers, friends, family, and people you actually network with. So here was a woman, Deborah Dean, and I was working with Deborah, um, God, she was with the, company that does all airline engines. What was it? Oh, Dassault, Dassault Systems. So I was working with her on a strategy meeting. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, we're not linked in yet. So this is the old way to link in. This was on the computer. Well, I'm going to show you the new way now. But it used to say how you know each other, and then you put a message. So right now, when you open your phone, go to Kathleen Lindenmeyer, okay? Who is not friends with Kathleen, connected with Kathleen yet? Okay, so you're going to go to Kathleen, and then you're going to go to me. So I'll write down, Kath, I'll spell Kathleen's name Thank for you. Your advantage is there's not too many Kathleen Lindenmeyer. Sometimes they can go to like Michael Smith. <laughs> well, even finding Maria Giordano for Artie, it's, it was hard. So we've got Kathleen Lindenmeyer. And we've got Gail Lowney Olofsson. Because I think there is a Gail Olofsson in there that is me, that when I was first setting it up and made mistakes. But I don't have the passcode. Oh, D B O? Deborah. D B R A. Oh, okay. Okay, so here's three people that you can link in with. Oh, and I'm writing Bob Evans. So for Bob, you would put in enhance a color. But don't be like, I don't want to work at enhance a color. That's not why you're meeting Bob. He may hear of teaching jobs. He may hear of restaurant jobs. Bob hears of everything. So when you go in, what you're going to do is, now it's going to, did you get to Kathleen? OK. So now you're going to view profo full profile, press view, um, press view full profile, and you're going to see three dots right there. You don't want a messenger because you'll use up your messages. And go to personalize your invite. So you're going to see three dots. Did you have it there? Um, Let me know when you're in. OK. So you want to go to the three dots right there. Mm -hmm. And now, no, you didn't. Did you hit the three dots? How come it yeah. didn't go up? Hmm. That's really weird. You weren't, no, no, oh, because you were on yours. Put oh. in Kathleen Lindenmeyer. Oh, I have already. Okay, so now put in yeah. Gail Lowney Olofsson. So I did I, yours already. Oh, yeah. but did you write me a message? No. Okay, did you do Deb? I didn't know you. Yeah, I've. I want to yeah. teach you how to do a message, though. Okay. That's for the whole purpose of this. So who else could, would you want to meet? Oh, someone in the room. Who's somebody in the room that you're not friends with yet? Me. Okay, so now go in and let me show you the three dots. Did you get the three dots so you know? And did you write, Dear Gail, nice to meet you today? That's what you want me to do? Yep, you write, Dear Gail, I'd like to connect. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, thank you for the program today. I'd like to connect. Mm -hmm. Do you have, uh, do you need help no there? Message. Yeah, just I'd like to connect. By the way, I use this all day long. Oh, 
Yep, yeah, now go to the three dots. And now to, hmm, isn't that funny? When I do it online, if I go to connect with someone, it gives me the option yeah. to send a message, but it didn't have but, from my phone. But it's not giving you a, isn't that something? Okay, but you'll see, you have it right there. So he prepped, just call me if you have trouble. Okay. Or, but, yeah. Oh, but no, go back, because you run out of messages. Three dots, personalized invite. Yep. And now you personalize, so you go to personalize invite. You just don't have a way to do that on your phone. It's really strange. Did you get it? Did you get how to do it, Seb? So you put a personalized message in? Yes. Okay. All right. Yep. Now, I'm also, did everybody put their best advice they ever got up here? Did you, all, did you all put it up? Okay. So you can get up from your seats for a minute and come take a picture of this. Let's make it look nice. That'll get you to stretch your legs. We're in the final stretch now. Have you had fun? Are you having fun today? Is it a good way to learn just, you know, being? When we did this last time, we went nine to five. We went all day. But we brought, we had a couple more people come in. This is the express course today. Okay. So come and take your picture here. Take a picture of the um, best advice so that now you're getting a lot. I'm going to take it too. Another great thing to do as we just finish on the networking part is be careful about who you link in with, okay? You don't have to link in with everyone. I want to know the person, I usually want a message, or I look at what connections, and if we only have one connection in common and I might not know that and they're just linking in, I'm not linking in. It's not going to happen. So I'm also going to tell you another great networking tip that I wish I had done earlier. I'm going to pass my card around, take a picture of it, if you want the information. This isn't my author card, this is my full-time job card. So this is with Newport Restaurant Group and I work with um, The Boat Show and different things. Take a picture and start a file on your phone in photos called resources. Take a picture of Kathleen's card and start a file, and Deb's card, and put their cards in and just call the file resources. And everyone that you start collecting. Now, who wanted to meet Bob Evans? Is there somebody who wanted to meet Bob? Because when you introduce yourself to Bob, you say, I'm in Gail Lofson's class. She's raving about you. I'd like to connect. If you're interested in the beverage industry, you go over to Brennan and you say, I want to introduce you. Oh, Brennan, would you introduce me to your dad? He has a very storied career in the business. So I'm going to pass my card out one side this way, one side this way. There's no reason to keep it. You can take a picture and in your phone, again, start an album called Resources. By so, the way, Bob Evans works for, if you guys ever open up your career life design guide that you can grab in the corner, or maybe you have one, the very first thing, if you look inside, there is an ad here for Enhance a Color, which is right here in Danbury. Enhance a Color is one of like the top five or something organizations that can put a print on anything, print anything. Windows, walls, all, did they do all this? They do all this. Enhance a Color actually did all this. So um, they do a lot of stuff here at the university, right here in downtown Danbury. So Bob Evans actually, they sponsored part of this guide. Um, and their uh, advertisement is right inside. So you can see some of the really cool stuff they do. So maybe as you're looking at this thing, actually I want to learn more about that organization. I'd be happy, I'd be happy to introduce you to Kevin O'Connor, who's the CEO, um, or I think his wife is actually the CEO. He's like the, the, uh, the, the chief operating officer. But anyway, Bob Evans works for Yeah, so now go to um, the three dots. And you go to personalize invite, and then you write, Bob, I'm sitting in Gail's class. Kathleen 
is raving about your company. Give Kathleen the street cred on that. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to start wrapping it up um, with the fourth part of this. But before we wrap it up, take your pen and write down on the survey, what are you walking away with so far? What are some of the things you're walking away with? There's three squares. That's the most important part of the survey is for me to know what you are walking away with. There's also a little square there that says if you want to be on my mailing list, you can be. It's motivational. It's annoyingly motivational, the little newsletter that I send around. So if you're interested in that, you can join. You can just put your name and I'll add you to it. If I remember, <laughs> the best thing is to go on to gailspeaks.com. Um, and it's my website. And then just go sign up for newsletter. So if you're interested in that, if you like leadership newsletters and stuff like that. OK. The last thing is, one of my favorite quotes in the whole world, and you could use this at an interview is, it's what you learn after you know it all that really counts. Because we learn, we really never finish learning. We are never completed in our learning. So it's what you learn after you know it all that really counts. Your mindset, when you walk out of this room today, instead of being, I have to go to class, I have to go to dinner with my grandmother, I have to go shopping, I have to whatever you have to go to my friend's soccer game, whatever it is. So if I was like, oh, I've got to, I have to go to my sister's triplets pole vaulting event. I've got to go to my sister's triplets play. I've got to go to my son's, ba our son's baseball game. That's not, it's, I, you don't have to do anything you get to. I was walking with one of my girlfriends. She was turning 50 and I said, how do you feel about turning 50? And she looked at me and stood back and said, I get to turn 50. She had just lost a friend of breast cancer. So this was probably 2015, 2016 that she said this. And I'm like, wow, I'm changing my vernacular today to I get to versus I have to. So avoid comparison. They're smarter than me. They're more wealthy than me. They're prettier than me. It gets you nowhere. Everyone has their gifts. Stop comparing yourself to other people and live your own life. Don't spend time on regrets. Move forward. Regrets are lessons. We all have them. So just move forward as far as that goes. Don't worry about There's going to always be something you regret, especially as you get older. But learn the lesson. There's no time ever for the attitude, for the attitude, ever. You are not all that. As my friend Kathy always says, you're not all that in a bag of chips. So no attitude. Be kind. Help other people. And Develop your gifts. Stop focusing on what everyone else has and develop what you have. And the last thing I leave with you today is the concept of Kaizen. Okay? So Kaizen is constant improvement. Kaizen is the concept of constant improvement. If you use this in an interview, it is going to be great. Google Kaizen. It means you want to be 20% better than you were yesterday, 1% better. Do one more thing at the restaurant before you leave. You want to get out of there. You know what? You see someone trying to do their, clean their section. I know you already do this, Sebastian. But go over and help them clean up so they can get out too. It's that plus one. What's one extra thing? You go up to your boss and say, oh my god, your desk, let me. You don't say it like that. You could offend them. You just say, oh my gosh, you are so busy. What's one thing I can do to help you? Give me something. No, 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 I have to do it. No, no, no. There's one thing. There's got to be one thing. My friend Brian Katsonis, he works for a company called Smith Optics. When Brian comes in and guest speaks in my class, he's usually just drying off from surfing because his whole job is lifestyle. He skis, he boards, he surfs, and he sells helmets, goggles, and he loves his life. But he tells kids, be 20% better today than you were yesterday. So if you walked a mile, you ran a mile, run a mile point two. What's something you can do to be 20% better? And if you don't want to be better every day, Try something once a week that you can be better at. I have so many things that I want to learn. And it's like, I've, I'll show you the one thing too. This, is, this, could, this could be your life changer, may or may not be. This is what we'll end on today. And then I'm going to take questions, so get them out. Um, this is a game changer. For a company I was working with, I had to read a book called Scrum. So I'm going to just give you what I learned from the book Scrum. If you have a whiteboard, or it could be a big piece of construction paper if you don't have that, this is how you're going to stay organized for the rest of your life. So
So you think of all the projects that are backlogged. What's something, Brennan, that you should do that isn't done yet? Like anything? Yeah. Oh, wash my car. OK, so that's a wash your car. OK? What is something that you need to do? Clean your room. Clean your room. So, and it's backlogged, or you need, well, that you need that's to do it. Bad, that's more, those are more to-dos. Those aren't backlogged. So backlog is you keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Me doing my website up, edits, that's oh, a like backlog. Like to yeah. Um, to, no. Kind of backlog, but it could be urgent, and you just keep putting it on the back um, log. And then to do something that needs to get done, what you're doing, and what's done. So in sales, backlog would be the clients that you've got that you could be following up with, or your job search. This would be a great board for your job search. So you're putting in all the companies you want to work for. Now you met with some. So you met with Bob Evans, and he gave you three leads. So you're right, Bob Evans and the three companies he told you to meet you with. You met with Kathleen and Deb, and they told you three companies. You're doing. You've set up the interview. You wrote the thank you note. You've met with them. You sent it. Th well, this is, would more, be more you set up the interview. This is, it's done. You wrote the thank you note. But you're going to continue. A month from now, you're going to follow up. You're going to find an article or something in, online and send it to them or clip it out and mail it to them so that you're going to keep, because you're like, wow, I really liked Bob. I really like Gail. I really like Kathleen. I want to keep staying in touch with them. I've got so many students from the last Westcom that was 2019 that still will send me an article or say, thought of you on this, or they comment on my LinkedIn. And then I'm remembering, oh, I remember them from Westcon. That's one of the biggest things you can do is comment on people's um, LinkedIn. You want to work for Google, then you want to comment on the LinkedIn. And remind me, make sure I give you that name. I'll, well, I'll give it to you right now on the camera. It's Jeff Leonard, Jeff with a G, G-E-O-F-F. -F. Try to find him on your phone. I'll make sure you have the right one. And, I'll, and you could just write, I'm in Gail's class. She's talking about you. And I would love to meet you at some point and learn more about your career path. That's all you have to say. See what he answers. So backlog, your backlog projects, your to-dos, your doing and done. Any questions on this? Because this could be a game changer in your career. Dylan, this could be a game changer for you when you go into um, grad school. It's a, it just is. It just works. So I have one in my home office and one in my um, workplace office. And just. In, I mean, the a whole operation, for those of who's in the business school here, they can take management. There's actually whole specialties in business on how to manage through, through Scrum. You're the Scrum Master. That's, a, that's actually a job. There's actually Scrum Master jobs in business, especially the bigger business, that actually do this, who are always trying to figure out how to keep on top of, of the, the way stuff gets done. Right. So before we end, because I want to take, I want to have time for two, like one or two questions. If we could all, let's all stand against this wall, hold a copy of the book with you and Kathleen, and just get the picture taken, and we get Christine. Yeah, yeah, we'll get everyone.